Austin, and we're joined now by two members of the Fluoride Free Austin, uh, Laura Presley, she's a PhD in physical chemistry, and Dr. Griffin Cole, he's a dentist here in town, and they're going to tell us about some of the action that's been taking place right here in Austin. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Aaron, thanks. Um, there's been a major change that's happened very recently. The supplier of the hydrofluorosilicic acid that Austin uses as their fluoride source and their fluoride chemical in the tap water, the supplier of the chemical changed their material safety data sheet as recently as May, the end of May. And um, I have looked at a lot of material safety data sheets in my career as a chemist, probably scores and scores of them. And I can say, honestly, I have never seen this type of health warning in a material safety data sheet. Um, do you want to read, do you like to read through that or? Yeah, let's go over that. And that's important, of course, because this is the company that admittedly uses aluminum byproducts and industrial waste, really, that they put in so much of the water throughout the country. Now, we have a quote from that material data sheet here. It says, prolonged or repeated overexposure to fluoride compounds may cause fluorosis. Fluorosis is characterized by skeletal changes consisting of osteosclerosis, hardening or abnormal density of the bone, as well as osteomalacia, softening of the bones, and by model discoloration of the enamel of teeth if exposure occurs during enamel formation. Symptoms may include bone and joint pain and limited range of motion. And of course, fluoride is known to be con a contributor to bone cancer, th thyroid disorder, brain inflammation, and even reduce sterility and fertility, kind of a common meme when we talk about these modern day chemicals and some of the agendas behind it. But again, the material data sheet's important because it's as good as an official admission right from the company that supplies the fluoride. Uh, and so tell us more about what this means. So what's interesting about uh, what you just read, and I'm gonna repeat just one phrase, um, if exposure occurs during enamel formation, what that signifies, and when, when Fluoride Free Austin, when we first saw this, we were incredibly alarmed and actually uh, glad that they admitted this. Most material safety data sheets are intended for this, uh, let me, the, workers. the workers, the chemical workers at the plant, the chemical handlers who are handling these chemicals and putting them into the water supply. This warning specifically targets infants whose teeth are erupting Right. and uh, young children who are having their secondary teeth come in. This is what's unusual about this. It, it's, it is warning and alarming the user, which is the city of Austin and other cities in the United States that use this supplier, that children can be affected. This is unusual and it is phenomenal because now we've taken this to our Austin City Council and said, you have been warned. You now have the duty to put this warning that you now have received from your, your supplier, this warning needs to go on to mm. our water bills, the end users of citizens of Austin. And this can right. be used across the country to go, anybody can take this um, to their city council and say, look, this has recently changed. You are now basically liable. You need to warn downstream of your citizens. That's the impact of this. Yeah, and of course, there was the CDC warning earlier in January of this year, warning that yes. uh, young people could also be affected, recommending to lower it from 1.2 parts per million standard to a 0.7. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we were talking about this earlier, there's so many uh, commercial forms of bottled water targeted directly at babies. Uh, can you tell us the impact of that, Dr. Cole? Well, this actually... This really dovetails nicely with what you just mentioned. And it was actually Health and Human Services and the EPA who did the, uh, who did the downgrading. So when you go down from 1.2 parts per million to 0.7, I think that was just a way to, 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 to let people know, wow, they're getting way too much exposure. Yeah. I still don't think it's enough. But, but at least it's a start that they're acknowledging that this fluorosis, which for years was called a, uh, just a cosmetic effect, we now realize that's not true. This is a serious right. adverse effect. This is a this is the th this is the physical thing that we see as human beings, but yes. we can't see inside that the thyroid's being lowered, that the pineal gland's being affected, and all these other things you mentioned. So it's interesting that that this came out. It's very timely. Uh, but the baby water there uh, the, there's now several suits. In fact, there's one very recently against Nestle and Gerber uh, because they were targeting on the bottles. It was saying, you know, good for for healthy teeth and good for babies to drink and that and that's not true and in fact even uh, uh, besides the CDC organized dentistry actually now warns that you really shouldn't be feeding 
or making right. formula with tap water. Mm -hmm. So even the people that have been standing behind it for so long are now realizing, oh, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this. Yeah, so is this going to put cities like Austin at a point of liability now that they're warning that it is dangerous? So if they continue to put in the fluoride, uh, what will that mean? I, I think that that is a, a pro high probability. Now that they've warned the city, the city has the duty, they have the information, and they have to pass that on. Yeah, so Fluoride Free Austin has spoken with councils. I know they've had several <laughs> presentations. Uh, can you tell us about some of the things they've said, and, and do you think the tide's going to turn here in Austin? Because cities across the nation, have you, as you know, have began you know, doing away with it or, or refusing to put it in. I really feel like it's happening. I mean, I think so, too. We, our group, uh, if, if you go to any city council meeting on any random week, and they let citizens speak about whatever. There's always people that are talking about Every fluoride. Every week someone speaks Every against week. fluoride. They're hearing it over and yes. over again. We've yes. met with council members privately, all of us, a group of a lot of professionals, chemists, MDs, chiropractors, you name it. And we have sat there and provided them all the science mm. and, and all the reasons why. You know, Austin should be the first large city in the, in the continental United States to get rid of it. It would start a huge trend, I believe. Yeah, a lot of credible people, but only a year or two years ago, they were laughing in people's faces uh, when they would bring this up at city council. Uh, now, again, here in Texas, just a little ways down the road, the big Longhorn rival, uh, College Station, just got rid of it. So uh, I guess the Aggie jokes aren't true. They're not as stupid as, uh, well, as we are bright. here in Austin. They, they did it. They did an excellent job. There, there's I, I, my hats off to their city council. They it was just last week. They voted six to one to remove the fluoride from the budget. And they initially approached this as a budgetary issue because you know times are hard and taxes are low and et cetera, where the tax incomes are not as high as they want them to be. Um, so then it got put back on the agenda to reevaluate. So they did that last week. And out of the seven council members, including the mayor, four out of the seven themselves went and did the research and looked at the most research, most recent research that's out there in the last 10 years and the issues of, of hypothyroidism, the issues of IQ in children, the issues of fluorosis and um, attention deficit disorder, which has been linked to fluoridation. Only in 2010, there was a, a publication, um, the journal Toxicity, linked to those things. And they actually went out and did the research, came back and said, I don't want fluoride in our water. It was phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, only one of the members basically said, no, we want to keep fluoride in our water. And I trust all the, the dentists that just showed up um, without any kind of research on her own. And uh, so yeah. it was amazing what they did. It was very responsible and very respectful. So we want to show a graphic right now. There's the cumulative number of U.S. cities who have rejected or eliminated fluoridation by year. And I guess this chart goes back to 1990 yes. all the way up here to 2011. And it went from almost zero, just a couple cities, to now approaching 250 cities. And it's still growing. It's growing. I know uh, several Nashville suburbs recently uh, voted to do away with the fluoride. Now, of course, the people in Austin, that now that they've done the research, they need to serve the public as they were elected to do and actually get rid of it. Uh, what kind of action are we looking for on that? Well, we've met with them several times, as, a, uh, as I mentioned, and quite honestly, the easiest way would be to get four council members to just put on the agenda and just vote it. That's, that's what we're really hoping for. To go to a vote uh, with all the people would be a challenge because big money would come in. You're talking about the other options, collecting other signatures. Other options, and and yeah, signatures. That's not what we want to do. That's not what we want to do. do it's going to be dragged out. It's going to yes. take too long. It's, and, and all we're asking for right now is a warning on the water bill, uh, clearly written, hopefully mm -hmm. in bold, saying do not give this to infants, young children, because that will at least raise eyebrows. And the parents say, well, if they can't have it, why should I be drinking it? That's our first, first agenda. Second agenda is get it out. And, of course, you mentioned the cost, too. Uh, I'm not sure if the numbers are up to date. I've heard it's more than a million dollars a year we pay to add a, a toxin to our water, which, again, I took the tour of the water facilities. We just showed the footage earlier in this episode. And there's what looks to be a reasonable filtration system, several systems. And then once they have the clean water, which is already a great source from here in central Texas, then they add the fluoride and, and the chlorine, too, I believe. But that's another topic. It's... It's about $800,000 a year, I think, is what the most recent number is to purchase it and get it in the water supply. Yeah, so if only for budgetary it. reasons, if, if uh, only we should for that. cut that back. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally agree. Uh, now, I believe we have another graphic uh, of a warning about fluoride here. 
Fluoride warning on Austin water utility bills, direct language from the CDC and Austin City website, as well as the material safety data sheet. So I guess this is what you're proposing to put on the water bill. And the text would read, in January of 2011, the CDC lowered the maximum level of fluoride allowed in tap water from 1.2 parts per million to 0.7 parts per million. Austin currently fluoridates at 0.7 parts per million. Prolonged or repeated overexposure to fluoride compounds may cause fluorosis, and fluorosis is characterized by skeletal changes consisting of osteosclerosis and osteomalacia, and by model discoloration of the enamel teeth if exposure occurs during enamel formation. And again, that means uh, as a baby and in early childhood, uh, when people are, when you're most at risk for all kinds of uh, chemical infusions. And uh, I think the most important point, though, is that this is not just here in Austin. We've showed the other cities where they've taken it out, and they have a great network here in town, uh, Fluoride Free Austin. But people need to be doing this everywhere, confronting their city councils, wherever they are, and making this an issue. And I know people have done videos on YouTube, uh, calling out the companies, calling out the fluoridated baby water, but we need to see more. Yes, and we have, um, what's interesting about this warning, the water department here in Austin has said they will not put the warning on the bill unless the city council dictates to them and votes uh, to do that. So we've got a couple of steps to get to that point and we need your help with this. We have a city council meeting, it's a um, public health and human services subcommittee that is going to vote three members, Morrison, Martinez and Riley. They will potentially pass and make a recommendation that this warning be on the bill. So then it goes to the full council. Mm -hmm. Then the full council will vote. Um, so we need people at the October 18th meeting at the City Council uh, Public Health and Human Services Committee meeting at 2 p.m. Sign up would probably be around 2.30 p.m. It actually starts at 3. So yeah, that so is, that's coming up that in just a little over two weeks. That is coming up in a couple weeks. weeks, and that is a big deal. And mm -hmm. then we can get, once it gets out of that little committee, can move up to the full council and then they will vote on it and then we will see where everybody stands. Yeah, we'd like to see action we on that. See that. We so see is there it. anything else you'd like to tell the listening audience out there who, as you know, are worldwide and they're doing this throughout the Western world? You talked too about the graphic where there's an overall decline in, in teeth health and, and all the other factors too. Yeah. I would, uh, well, if I could go first. Go yeah. I've always said this and I think this brings it down to a really easy level to understand for everybody. You don't have to know the science at all. There's three inherent flaws with water fluoridation. Number one, it doesn't do its intended function. It was designed to prevent cavities, to benefit the teeth. Science has now shown over the past decade and a half or further that it does nothing beneficial for the teeth. And in fact, does a lot of deleterious things down the road like the modeling of the teeth as well as other skeletal changes. So that's, that's the first thing. It's not doing what it was supposed to do. Number two, it's not fluoride. It, you know, we talk about fluoride like it's this general term. It's hydrofluosilicic acid. It's a waste product from the fertilizer industry. The EPA does not allow it to be dumped in landfills. It cannot be aerated into the air, but somehow we can put it in our water supply. So that's the second thing. It's not fluoride. And the last thing is there's no dosage control. A little infant who is, who is fed formula, the majority of their diet is water, and usually tap water. It's not going to be some nice spring water that has no fluoride in it. So a small baby will drink more water for his or her weight than I will for my weight. It's the only drug that's prescribed without a prescription. And why do you mention that? Because this is a line in the sand for public health yeah. everywhere. Because yeah. as you know, they propose putting lithium in mass yeah. water supplies yeah. and forced mass medication. This is yeah. not acceptable. And so if we don't say no to fluoride, we're going to see all kinds of things added. Yeah. If, That's right. if, if I prescribe you an antibiotic, I'm going to look at your body weight, your age, and, 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 I'll, and I'll call accordingly. Give them 500 milligrams. For a child, I would lower that because of the body weight and what they can consume. Fluoride, there's no dosage control. You drink what you want, you take as many showers as you want, you absorb, whatever. There's no rules. And that's our argument, is that this yes. is the one medication that there's just no control over. Mm -hmm. and, let's, and make no mistake about it, that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I want to reiterate what Dr. Cole has said, and I've, I've talked to thousands of um, people with, in, in my business as I, over the last several years, and when I talk about fluoride, the one thing that gets everybody's eyes absolutely lit up is the concept of dose control. There is no dosage control. Where a man six and a half feet tall and a little child two to three years old gets the same amount of this chemical yeah. in one glass of water. 
that hits people's heart okay it really gets them they don't have to understand this research that research and all the conflicting information they don't have the the technical background to really understand that but they do understand the dose control